Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Dispensational Bible Church where we study the whole Bible in the Bible's own way. And we are excited for another day of grace, another so- a day in which the Lord has uh, given us a day to rejoice in Him and rejoice in the fact that uh, we are saved, sealed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And even though um, it seems like a, uh, an evil world out there, which it is, uh, we can be light in this dark world and be able to shine and let people see what you rejoice in, the fact that Christ died and was buried and rose again for your sins. Uh, we'll be singing it as well with her soul this morning, number 18. We'll sing all four uh, stanza of verses, number nine.
everything is well with your soul. In Christ Jesus, everything should be well, right? Amen? Uh, we're in Lesson 34 in the book of uh, uh, Genesis. And go to chapter 4, verse 16. We left off with uh, explaining some things while Cain killed his brother and why he left and all this stuff. But we're in verse 16. Now, there's some names in here as we go down through here that I can't pronounce correctly. So as we read them, don't be afraid to, to uh, speak them correctly for me or with me, for us. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter uh, 4, verses 16. I have a light on this thing up here. Uh, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bared Enoch. And he built a, a, built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now Enoch means to dedicate, dedication. And Cain builds the city in direct rebellion against God. It, it is a state of advanced civilization, as you're going to see, that is going to be developed there. And uh, what you will find in the rest of the passage, down through paragraph 25, verse 25, is the development of the first civilization. And you'll see that the first civilization was a Canaanite in its origin, and in its character, character and in its destiny. And you'll find out there are believers there, believe it or not, verse 25 and following, but they were not the prime movers in society. And as we go down through here, you keep it in mind about the prime movers in society. Even today, as you look around in the world, what is the prime movers of society happening? They're destroying your family. They're destroying marriage. They're destroying your hope. They're destroying anything they can do, and you're going to see what's going on here. They were not people who were controlling society. The people that, uh, the believers. Because of that, the seeds of discord and rebellion that are in society are going to wind up and accumulate in the flood and the uh, demonstrations in the days before the flood of the necessities of divine ordained institution of government, nationalism, is in order to protect the rights and liberties and freedoms of individuals of the couple, marriage, and of the family, just what I mentioned. Remember the four divine institutions that we've been looking at? Mm -hmm. We looked at free will. God never violates your free will. Two, marriage. Three, family. And then nationalism. What is the world like to do? Internationalism. That's not what God put out there. It's nationalism. And uh, beginning in verse 17, all the way through the Bible, is the doctrine of the city. Isaiah talks about woe to the nation. Woe to you who lay house to house. God never told them about building a city. And, and, and when you build cities, God says there's going to be trouble there. Do you believe that? Many of you have seen... Many of you have been around here about all your life. You've seen how Canton and Maslin is building, building up, building up. And it's really caused a lot of problems. And you think about these bigger cities out there. You get what when you get going to be trouble. You get that when people are jammed in there. And society today, whether you want to believe it or not, there won't uh, have you ever heard the term 15-minute cities? Open up your ears and start listening to what the world's wanting to do. And Cleveland's one of them. And they want a 15-minute city, meaning you're not traveling outside of 15 minutes. You're going to be living in a building. You're going to, they're going to have your grocery store in that building. You're going to not need a vehicle garage because you're going to be on government transportation. And you're going to live there and work there. And you're not going out 15 minutes. Now, I do know this. I've been around a lot of cities around. And they're like, my, in like New York City 
in the Chicago area, they could be 30,000 to 50,000 people within a five square miles. <laughs> That's all they go. Five square because they got everything they need to do. And the reason is there's a spirit there. Any of y'all ever been to New York City? Oh, yeah. You ever been downtown? That city never sleeps. And I was in there in the 70s, and it wasn't a pleasant city. And then it cleaned itself up, and it was a great city. But it never sleeps. Anything you want, there's a spirit there. And you'll see that in verse 12, that Cain was supposed to be a fugitive and a vagabond, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. God didn't tell him to stop. God didn't tell him to go build a city, so he goes out and he drives his stakes in the ground so deeply he doesn't think that he can be uprooted. And he builds a monument to his rebellion and he dedicates it in, his na in the name of his son. And his son is someone whom Cain's life is extended. And what Cain is doing here is, uh, is, is to construct the world and the society in his own way. Now you saw the religious apostasy. You saw the way the Cain in the beginning of the chapter. Now you're going to see a society built on a rebellion against God and the city is a monument to man's rebellion. Once again, God told him, you're going to be a vagabond and move. What did he do? Settled he settled down. He started building a city. And when you visit a, a city, a big city, what do, you, what do you think about that sometimes? When you've never seen a city in your life. I was a country boy, brought up in the hills of uh, southwest Virginia, and the foothills of Appalachian Mountains. And the first time I ever went to New York City, I was 17-ish. And it's just like, Wow. I like this. I end up moving there right after high school, working there. And I was like, I don't want to go back home. I don't want to go back down there because that city was just such spectacular things. And you go and see them. You can walk around like this all day long looking at the skyscrapers. But let me ask you this. You're looking at this man's achievements here, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> You're seeing a big, even if you go to Cleveland, you know, the places like that, you can go in, in Canton and walk up uh, uh, William McKinley's monument and you're standing up there and you're like, wow, this is awesome. You know, what man is achieving here? It's a monument to the grand ingenuity, or, uh, ingenuity. thank you, and the skills of man's hand. The things that you build sometimes, aren't you amazed with it? What you, I can build, look what, I, look what I'm doing. And look at what I can do. And what, you're, what we're going to see, more of that when we get to chapters 10 and 11. But the, the doctrine of the city and its, and its sinful usefulness, and yet you see how God one day is going to redeem that. You know, because didn't he promise Abraham a city? land and city and he looked at the city whose builder and maker was God that's who Abraham looked at you know them guys them guys walked around in tents for a long time didn't they yeah. and he was a stranger and a pilgrim not abiding in any city now you're going to live in a moment man built by man's hands but live in a city that God built one to be a glory for God, right? Are we looking for when we get called out of here? We talk about the new Jerusalem and new heaven and new earth and the new city and all that stuff. I don't know if you ever thought about how big that is, but it's huge. Huge. And God redeems the city as a form and structure as well as he does man. Verse 18. And Enoch was born, and unto Enoch was born Arad. And Arad begat Majula, and Majula begat Masula, Masula, and Masula, Masula begat Laman. Notice Lamech and Enoch are the names you'll see again in Genesis chapter 5. Enoch begat Lamech, and, and Lamech begot Noah. 
Cain's Enoch is born first. So you can't think if it's the same. It's not the same one. Okay? And you name people after people who are esteemed around you. And these people began to be leaders of societies and civilizations, and people were named after them. George Washington Carver. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't kin to George Washington, was he? But yet he took that name. So you, the people that you give names to is somebody probably on your mind that, that did some things. Very few times anymore you see uh, Edward V, Edward VI, that type of thing, unless they take that name in royalty type thing. Uh, Arad and J Jared in, in chapter 5, were highly esteemed people in the world. Verse 19. And Lamech took unto him how many wives? Two. Two wives. The name of, of one was Ada, and the name of the other one was Zilla. Zilla. Now, Ada bare Jubal. He was the father of such as dwelt in tents, and of such as have cattle. He was a cattleman. He was also an agriculturalist kind of guy. Husbandry began, or the beginning there. They're going to be taking care of some things. And his brother was named Jubal. We, you know, you could say Jubilee. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zella, she also bared Tubalcain, an instructor of the Art, and art, artifacts. Yeah. Artifacts. He's, he's, he's an artist. He's, it, he, it's art. He okay? makes things out of brass and iron. Yes, he made, uh, in brass and iron. Notice he is an instructor of every artificial. Huh. He is going to instruct and teach the art of metal urgency. He's going to teach how to do things in metal. Okay? And the sister of uh, Tubal Cain was who? Nehemiah. Now, in the wake, by the way, okay, in the wake of the city life in verse 17, and the establishment of a city, immediately comes a series of loosenesses, permissiveness, and what's that? Uh, uh, Sophistication. Verse 19 is permissive lust. 20, agriculture advancements. 21, advance in art. 22, metal, working in metal, industry, manufacturing. And the components of civilization are being laid out right there. Now, many of you had kinfolk, grandparents, great-grandparents, that wasn't born here. They was born in Kentucky. They was born in West Virginia. They was born in Tennessee. Why did they come here? Because of work, the jobs, the cities offered them all that stuff, and they flocked here and started working here and started living here, and you got born here. You know what I mean? And next thing you know, you got kids born here. But those, uh, And they carried on. But verse 19, Lamech took on how many wives again? Two. What do you call that? Polygamy. This is the first instance of polygamy right here. City. No, when he took two wives. Right? Hold your finger there and go to Matthew chapter 19. Here again, you have the violation. Now what's the what's the What's the institutions of God again? The first one is? Free will. Free will. What's the second? Marriage. marriage. What's the third? Amen. Now what did God say about marriage? It's between who? Man and man. Okay, man and woman, right? Man and woman. And, and right here is the violation of that marriage. In Genesis chapter 2, God have institute marriage, and Lemon is the first one to break one of the creation's of God's institution. The sin that began with Lamech 
here continues ended continued uh, ultimate ended at in the flood okay Matthew 19 verse 3 the Pharisees also came unto him tempting him and saying unto him it is it is lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause is it question and he answered and said unto them have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they and the twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. But therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. They said unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? He saith, saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was what? Not so. Beginning of what? God's plan. God's plan, you know that. So there is no mistake uh, no way to mistake that. God made Adam and Eve one and joined them together. And Christ said, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. From the beginning of the institution of marriage, it was one man, one woman, one flesh, not one man, two women, three flesh, or two flesh, no polygamy there. That's the way it was from the beginning. So what does this guy does? Who's his daddy or his granddaddy? Lamech. Who's he kin to here? Cain. Very good, Cain. The way of Cain. Lamech is going to change that. He is going to violate that. You're going to see the human evil manifest here. You're going to see it in Cain, the rebellion. You see it in Lamech, in the permissiveness, in the lust, and so forth, and in polygamy. Mark this down. When you get, get to cities, the sinful society of man, and you let man develop society, marriage is going to be attacked. Now, I know some of you lived longer than I have. You've probably never seen this in cities before. You've probably never seen the un ungodliness, the filthiness, the, the sinfulness that goes on. And you know what? It don't have to be in the cities no more, does it? It's out here in the countries now. It's in your TV sets. And speaking of which, uh, we watch Pluto TV a lot. It's internet TV. It's free. And they have classic TV shows. And you can watch uh, Green Acres and you can watch all of them and uh, Andy Griffin well we was watching Andy Griffin and it was towards the end of his you know where they're switching it over to Mayberry RFD and and, and uh, Opie's about this tall now so uh, um, they had a different deputy named Warren and uh, he, he's he's watching Otis, remember Otis? Oh, yeah. You know how Otis would come into the... He'd put come in drunk. In yeah, put him, <laughs> he's coming in with imaginary dog. Yeah. With imaginary <laughs> stick. Right. You know, and he's jump, jump, jump. And Warren's <laughs> looking at him. And he goes in the jailhouse, open, open up the thing, and puts himself in, you know, overnight. So as Warren's looking at the things, you know what mosaic tiles are? Yeah. Oh. Remember, I guess that apparently that was big at one time, right? So... He's he's going. Warren's going to these mosaic tile places, or art classes. We're speaking of art here, and uh, so he's like he went to a Andy. He said, "Andy, uh, War uh, Otis got a problem. Otis needs a valve, a valve. You know, he needs an outlet. He needs something different. A valve. Well, before that happened." Opie said at the breakfast table saying, Dad, I, I need a valve. Not a, a valve to, you know, ex 
express myself. I need an outward. And I'm listening to this. I'm like, this stuff was piping in our, our homes like you need a valve. You, you don't listen to your parents. You, you need to be on your own, that type of thing. So make a long story short, Andy, Andy looked at Warren and goes, Otis has got a valve. He goes, I like to fish, you like to do mosaic, and Otis like, like to drink. drink. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a valve. So he's a, he went in there and started making, uh, uh, Warren started introducing him, and he made this big painting of a brown cow in a pasture field. It looked like something like a two-year-old do, right? And he put it on his mantle, and he's looking at him, and he's like, and he took it down, and it broke Otis's heart. But while Otis was under the influence, he made a nice thing, and they just left him alone. But what I'm getting at is, is the society, when you're working in the society, and, and when you attack the basic framework of marriage, is going to be attacked, the basic framework of society, the things that builds a family, which is the building block upon which society stably rests, you're going to destroy society. Green Acres. I'm sorry, I, that same night, Green Acres. You know who uh, Mr. Douglas was? Yeah. And he got it on his wife. You can't even change a light bulb in a refrigerator. Look, open up the refrigerator, take this light bulb out, put the light bulb in. You can't even hang, you know, he was just like, can't you do anything you own? You know, she's a city dweller, right? And uh, you can't even hang a uh, picture. So she takes a sledgehammer and knocks a hole. He goes, what are you doing? I'm hanging this picture. She didn't have the knowledge, right? So she goes to Ralph and Alf, the, the workers there. <laughs> and she's, yeah, she's destroying everything in the world. But uh, Mrs. Douglas leaves her, her husband a note saying, enjoy your evening, because I'm sure I am, or something like that. And she goes, he goes, what do you mean? And Ed pops in. He goes, I'm making you supper tonight. Ed was the host. He's in there watching Green, uh, uh, Petticoat Junction. You know, it, it just, it, and, but the things, what I'm trying to say is the things that he was telling you, you know, these people work long hours and, and away from their family to bring you 30 minutes worth of entertainment. And it was, that's what Ed, Ed was telling. I'm like, I didn't want to hear that. I know what society is about today. You could take Hollywood. You could take a cities. You could take politicians. Are they in line with your principles today? Why? Not God's principles. Not God's. So this is where it goes back to. Goes back to. But anyway, I'm not saying I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> but those old, those old, those old shows that we grew up with probably didn't think nothing wrong with them, but go back and listen to some of them, what they're saying. But look, the, so the seeds are being sown right here. Two wives. Genesis chapter uh, 4, verse 20. The rebellion is there. You mark it down, these cities, the sinful society of man, and, let, and you let man develop society, marriage is going to be attacked. We've got city, a lot of cities in Ohio that runs this uh, runs this state, does it not? I mean, the people in there, do they not vote a certain way? And, and you might like, how in the world can you vote that way? And you're like, well, they're, they're, they're jobs. You know, that type of thing. It's the city. It's where I live. It's where I've been getting accustomed to. Verse 20, and Ada bare Jubal. He was a father of such as dwelt in tents and, and of such as have cattle. You know the first ministry in, in your life is your home. Those that are married, there's a wife and kids, and you, you, that's your first ministry. And if you let people come in and do things, that's going to destroy that ministry you have. And I've watched people over the years that um, uh, denomination-wise that men won't step up and do the job no more. So who's stepping up and, and preaching these days? Women. And they have no, they have nothing 
see nothing wrong with that. So they changed that and said, okay, we'll let this in here. We'll let that in there. You've got to guard. you got to guard yourself. And Jubal is a, husband, is a husbandry man. He is a guy providing milk and so forth. The labor force moved to the cities to populate the cities. And the people are tilling the ground, and now they're moved to the cities and provide services there. And with the depletion of people on the farms, there was a need for more efficient of production methods. So they create margarine instead of real butter. How many still use margarine? Very good. Oh, we used always. Well, not so good. <laughs> but margarine is a chemical, one, one chemical way of plastics. And they made it for for uh, chickens, I think it was, fattening hogs. the fattening hogs and stuff like that, and found that was killing them. They wouldn't eat it. And, 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 and it was fattening them wrong, so they turned it over to people. But to right. ma make a long story short, the method's there. Here's one Cain's great-grandson's great Jubal is leading the way of advancement in agriculture and animal husbandry in the fields. Verse 21. And his brother named Jubal, we say Jubilee, you see that in the, in the word, he has a father of all such a, as handle the harp and organ. So Jubal is a what? Musician. And the instruments of music and dance are developed, the arts of entertainment. You're getting the basic elements of civilization developed, entertainment and arts. You see what's going on here? In these cities, where do you go to see a Broadway play? City. Out here on farmland, you go to the cities. Arts and entertainment. Verse 22, and Zella, she also bore Tubalkine, an instructor of every artificial, any of coal in a bit, and brass and iron. Now you get the brass and iron. Now you're going to get a metal, uh, people working in metal. Metal urgency, they call it. Industrialization and manufacture begins. You're getting the basic units of civilization. You get people together. The needs are there. The agricultural skills, the manufacturing skills, the fine arts are beginning to go. He builds a city and adores, adorns it with arts and science. He cheers it with music. Entertainment. Big city, big lights. And he, and he learns to feed it. He learns to build the convenience for it. And you got and you have got society grow, growing great. You know they're growing big time there. There's a need when you go in a city because you don't want to go outside that city if you have to drive to the farms. You might as well live out in the farm. So they, they keep you there. They find you there. They give you transportation and all that stuff. You will notice this. The agriculture, the arts and entertainment, the manufacturing, uh, the music, the trade, civil power is the, remember what we talked about, the knowledge of good and evil? What was the, what was the seed? What was the tree? What did God, what did we talk about? I'm cutting this apart, but you are. what did God didn't want them to do? Eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did we decide the good and evil was? The fallen angels and the world out there outside of the garden? No. Oh, Disobedient to his commands. Not only that, but remember human good and human evil? This is this right here is human good. I'm going to do it. God says, no, let me do it for you. No, but I'm going to. This is all has to do with human good. Okay? You're going to do human good, human evil. And this is what they consider human good. And in chapter 3, God did not want the human evil or the human good. And all these things that Cain did in the beginning of building the city, and Lamech does by attacking marriage with uh, what was it? Polygamy. And the other boys are going out to work 
for the betterment of mankind, not the betterment of God, and the progressiveness and upward spiral of man, human good, and there is no more acceptable to God Almighty than the other. You see where this is going? You see what's going on? You will find that the uh, the arts and the music and the trade and whatever ponders it to the lowest of man. But it makes the man feel good, don't it? The entertainment. And I know that you can take them and use them for the highest interest of people, but even then they contain the seeds of evil. And that will destroy the very thing, good thing, that you're trying to build. What's the verse in Paul that says there's a tough stuff that can't be built as that stuff be raised? Romans 3. Yeah. They contain the seed of pride, guys. Look what we are accomplishing. But you can accomplish stuff for the good of God. You know that. But you've got to make sure it's done the right way. And you know, whether they're expressing itself in human evil, I'm going to go out and satisfy the lust of the flesh, or whether it expresses itself in human good, I'm going to feel good about doing good. That's the human good and human evil. And, uh, and the higher things of human interest and the basic elements, lasciviousness, the two uh, bents make no difference. It is still the same thing that God looks at. It is still Cain and his kin's people doing it. Verse 23. And Laman said unto his uh, wives, Ada and uh, Zella, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged seven, sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and what? And seventy sevenfold. Now you can read all kinds of commentaries about this, but Laman killed a young man here. What he's saying, and he is saying a, he killed a man in self-defense. And if God protected Cain, the layman thinks that God ought to protect him seven times seven. You see what's going on here? And he ought to protect me far more than he did Cain. After all, Cain murdered the guy. You get the idea that Cain was standing over his city and saying, Lord, bless thee. God didn't bless him to do that. But he's standing over that. They seen that God spared Cain's life. So guess what they should do to him? Spare his life. Laman is bragging about what his great granddaddy did back there. He said, if God took care of him, blessed him, even though he murdered someone, I killed a guy in self-defense, he ought to take care of me. Lust and lawfulness is what you see in Laman. It said that the first poem that ever was recorded from the hand of a Canaanite, really the first one in the Bible, human history, like most poems and songs ever since, glorifies immortality, glorifies murder, glorifies, uh, denies the justice of God and judgment against sin. What you have here is a picture of society without God. Whether it's human evil or human good, it all contains a seed that leads to destruction. Now there's another side of this because verse 25. Adam knew his wife again. This is going uh, to go back. It is not the chronological after Lamech. You're back earlier than that because Abel dies, right? But let's go a few more uh, verses. Uh, Adam knew his wife again, and she bared a son and called his son, uh, name Seth. For God said, she, for God, she said, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, 
whom Cain slew. And, it, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called the name, his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Adam and Eve gets, uh, gets another boy, Seth, to carry the seed line off. Abel is killed, the seed line is gone, but God gives uh, them another son because you know that seed line of God not going through Cain. He marked him, you're gone. Cain chose to leave the presence of God. God made a place for them to sacrifice, and Adam brought his kids there to show him what's going on a daily, and Cain knew what to bring, and he left. And the and and seed line going to Redeemer is to come through Seth. Verse 26. Then began man to call upon the who? Name of the Lord. This is the first time prayer is mentioned in the Bible. They're calling on the name of the Lord. They're talking to the Lord. And that passes as... Uh, uh, people don't understand that. They tried to make out that the, the man began to call on the Lord in idolatry and everything that could be un, 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 unrighteousness. That's not right. They're not calling on them to continue the, the lifestyle they're leaving. But think about this. You're, to, the fact that this is no longer line of Cain. And now you are back in Abel's uh, line. And Abel's dead, Seth comes and takes the place, and he is promised seed and his boy and the next in the seed line. So they wouldn't call on the Lord to continue in human good and good, human evil. And, and what with the arrival of the seed line comes the revival of the, the renewing of the spiritual life and interest. Because think about that for a minute. Here is a guy that went out there and built a city, and he's convincing everybody that he's having kids and they're feeding that city. And it's not a godly city. It's a filthy city. And, they, and, and, and there's no such thing as a godly line of Seth. You know that. Because they're all lost. You know, people today, they still get upset that, that uh, they believe that uh, Mary was still a virgin. And and she didn't have no, no kids, and she's a mother of God, and she has no sin. What do you think about that? <laughs> she offered up an offering after she gave birth. That was, you know, she even said, "My God and my Savior." You don't need a Savior if you're not a sinner. She she needed a Savior just the same as everybody else does. Mm -hmm. But the thing is. Every ungodly, unsaved, hell-bound sinner until they trust the, God's word to them that was revealed to them. They had to come and get saved personally and individually just like you and I do. Just because you was born a Seth don't mean that you were saved. Just because you're born of a saved woman don't mean that you're saved today. And, and the time element involved here is not necessarily so, so late, but so long uh, so along with the development of uh, civilization also came the fact that the seed line is restored and now you have the line of Seth going into chapter 5 and when we get to chapter 5 we'll change gears a little bit but I just wanted to recap just for a second what is going on with Cain after he left Eden goes east of Eden and he builds a city and he builds it in rebellion with God so that city is in rebellion of God now today can you use cities to reach the lost you know we, we talk about every time we used to go to Chicago in, in July and we go downtown and, and we look around how, how easy it would be to take one preacher and put him there in that five-mile radius, he could reach thirty to 50,000 people in those high-rises and stuff. I'm talking about church. Now, you probably might get five out of 50,000, who knows, but it's still, there's, you can plant that. 
But the ideal now is uh, uh, the cities, you can go to Cleveland and, and, and every ethnic group in the world's in Cleveland, in New York, in Chicago. So you could go there and start teaching somebody and they could go back in their homeland and, and teach the Word of God. That's a mission. But uh, when I saw this about Cain, I'm like, and you look at the world today, that has not stopped. And when they called upon the name of the Lord, they're calling the fact that, hey, we need to get away from this stuff. We need for you to come. We need a Redeemer. We need your promise and all that. But when you go through the scriptures, and you will, the fact that, uh, do you know what Egypt is in the world? Sister. Anything ever good come out of Egypt? No. How about Sodom and Gomorrah? Mm -hmm. But Egypt is a, is is the world, and when when God sent His people down there in that world, do you know a lot of them conformed to that? But there's also a lot of them didn't, didn't they? And Moses brought them out. Of we should never be fearful of who we are in this world. We should never be fearful of the fact that there's evil people out there amongst us. And when you go to talk to them, chances are they're going to start degrading you and make you put you on a spot. And, uh, and you know, I'm not saying be careful what you do. Just know where you stand and be faithful in who you are in Christ and use the word. Use the word, because we have the word. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.